Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article of discussion is about the Naga Peace Pact. The Naga Peace Accord talks is scheduled to be held next week. This accord may result in certain tumultuous situation leading to breakdown in law and order situation or scarcity of certain essential commodities. To put this into perspective, to meet any eventuality that may arise because of breakdown in the law and order, the police force is put on eye alert. At the same time, the administration in Nagaland and Manipur have also issued a series of order costing people against hoarding of fuel and essential commodities. In this particular backdrop, let us try and understand what is this Essential Commodities Act of 1955. When it comes to the market economy, the prices are certainly determined by the demand as well as supply in the market. But there are certain laws which also empower the center. It also empowers the state to intervene in the market to protect the consumer interest. One such law that we have is what is called as Essential Commodities Act of 1955. Ever since this act came into picture, the government has been able to regulate the distribution, supply as well as distribution of some of the essential commodities. What are these essential commodities? This may include the drugs, which is very important for health services. It may include certain agricultural products like the onions. It can include edible oil, fertilizers and even petroleum products as well. How does this law work? If the center suddenly finds that there is a particular commodity let's say for example onion whose prices are increasing but there is short supply in the market of this particular commodity and the prices is suddenly spiking all that it takes is that it immediately issues a notification this notification will immediately say what is the stock holding that a particular person would be able to hold on to so it also ensures that there is a benchmark below which he can hold on to and above which he would not be able to store this particular commodity and this is also given for a particular period. So what happens under this particular position? So in case there is dearth with respect to that commodity, the central government will issue a notification below which they would be able to hold on to the commodity and above which they would not be able to retain this particular commodity for the benchmark that has been laid for a particular period. But remember this, it is the state government which will be implementing it. The central government will notify it, but it is the state government which is acting as the implementing agency. So any trading body that is dealing with this particular commodity, whether it is wholesalers, retailers, importers or even exporters have been prevented from stockpiling beyond a certain quantity. So what is the significance of this move? A state would be able to regulate the prices of it. So the consumers would be able to have all those commodities which are currently not in market because the supply is less and also the prices which are currently spiking will also reduce. So the first significant factor is the supplies will be increased and the increase in the prices immediately starts dropping. At the same time, the state machinery is the implementing agency. So not all shopkeepers or traders comply by this. So the state agencies conduct rights to get everyone to their toe and anyone who is moving away from this will be penalized and punished as well. So the excessive stock that are retained by the retailers as well as the wholesalers are auctioned in the fair price shops as well. This is for the commodities which means there are goods like the onions, petroleum products so on and so forth but there are certain other services as well. What are these services? Let's say for example the health services. Doctors who provide these health services or let's say for example the transport which are provided by the RTC drivers as well as the conductors these are also essential but these are not good so this is also important for the effective functioning of the society so one such act which is also important for ensuring that there are services in the market is what is called as essential services maintenance act so in case there are RTC drivers and conductors not working the doctors not working to provide services to the patients then this particular act will be enforced let's take a recent example example. Recently, in the state of Telangana, drivers working for the Road Transport Corporation went on a strike. They wanted certain incentives from the Telangana government, but the Telangana government did not circumvent to their pressure. 
that is when the telangana government immediately told all these striking conductors as well as drivers that they could implement this particular act they didn't implement it but they had given enough cautions to this particular drivers and conductors that if this is implemented you may have to go back to the service and provide these rtc services if not you will be enforced with some penal provisions this is what is the essential services maintenance act so for the commodity what we have is the essential commodities act of 1955 for the services what we have is the essential services maintenance act it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article however the entire analysis of the naga peace accord will be discussed in the following week once we have enough number of points for the discussion now let's look into the next article this article here is speaking about the artificial intelligence being employed in the assam tea growing areas of late there have been waves of propaganda what is it about there is fear mongering there is fear panic and phobia that this artificial intelligence has taken over the human jobs especially when it comes to increasing the research and development that is conducted in this field of artificial intelligence many of the stalwarts of the science and technology like stephen hawking Elon Musk have always said that this development of intelligent machines when proceeded beyond a particular point could mark an end of human kind the point here is yes humans are being replaced the point is yes they'll continue to be replaced by automation but there are wide range of jobs which cannot be performed without the human finesse now let's understand what are the advantages of artificial intelligence technological progress is leading to employment generation it is also leading to destruction of certain jobs what it basically means is there is creation of jobs at the same time there is destruction of jobs all those routine jobs are being destructed and new innovative types of jobs are being created ai tends to work on a task to task basis which means the entire the entire human generation cannot be replaced let's take some of the examples there are certain tasks which are routine in nature there are certain tasks which are hazardous in nature it is these areas where the ai pictures in and it will replace the human beings so the entire human generation will not be replaced because the human presence for its operation is very important and when there is an impediment that is when the ai pictures in for example the routine works and this may also include employment of humans in the hazardous conditions let's also take the present scenario there is a tea growing region there are people who are required for tea plucking as well as spraying of pesticides as well as fertilizers so in this particular area drones are used where there is shortage of labor and at the same time there is hazardous pesticides which needs to be sprayed across and this is being currently employed by the drone so wherever there is routine work artificial intelligence comes in wherever there is hazardous work artificial intelligence comes in but who is operating this artificial intelligence it is the humans who are behind this wherever there is this hazardous situation why harm the human beings so let's use the robots let's use artificial intelligence is what this technology all about in this particular scenario there were people who were employed for spraying of pesticides as well as fertilizers and this could have led to harmful effects like cancer as well as tuberculosis while now what happens is we are using certain drones and what we are doing is reducing the harmful impact to the human beings these human beings can be employed where the artificial intelligence cannot play its card so we are reducing the harm to the human beings at the same time what we are also doing is increasing the productivity of the artificial intelligence so what is that we can draw from this if automation is able to ensure a smarter and a safer existence for us there should be no reluctance in embracing it automation stands to challenge the very fabric of this traditional employment scenario so it is this innovation that we will have to embrace going forward is what this article all about now let's look into the next article this article here is speaking about the postal ballots what is the context the government has released a notification which now says that differently abled people as well as people above 80 years of age can now vote through the postal ballot in this particular backdrop let us try and understand 
what is a postal ballot and what is proxy voting in india voting is carried out using the electronic voting machine how let's say for example i am an elector that is i am an voter so what do i do i go to that polling booth i cast my vote for the political candidate as well as my political party this is the general norm but there are people in india let's say for example the armed forces or let's say for example the ambassadors who are working for india in some other country they may not be able to physically come up to that particular constituency and cast their vote but in case these people are not given this provision of voting we are violating their constitutional right of right to vote so what is the option left out the option that is left out is what is called as the postal ballot and the other is what is called as the proxy voting in the present scenario there are three types of people who would be able to use this postal ballot who are these three people one are the service voters then the polling duty officials and third are the electors who come under the preventive detention first let us look at the service voters who are these service voters these are the people who are serving india service basically means they are the ones who are employing their employment for serving the boundaries of india which means the service voter include all those armed forces that are covered under the army act which includes the assam rifles the crpf the itbp so on and so forth so all those people who are safeguarding us and all those armed forces who come under the army act will fall under this service voters then there are those people who are part of the state police but these people might be employed in some other state currently so these people will also fall under the service voters next in line are those people who are acting for the government as a polling duty there are polling agents there are polling officers there are presiding officers returning officers and public servants they have an obligation for serving the government so all those people who are working for the government of india or for the government of that particular state in case they are meeting their obligation as an official commitment such people will also be able to cast their votes as a postal ballot and when you look at laws as per rule 18 of conduct of rural elections 1961 all those electors or voters under preventive detention are also entitled to cast their votes but kindly remember prisoners who are under punitive detention and not preventive detention are not allowed to vote only those on preventive detention can cast their vote but those on punitive detention where it is a penal provision enforced on them such people will not be able to vote Also remember it is these postal votes which are counted first even before the EVM votes are taken up for counting Now let's look into what this proxy voting is all about Proxy voting allows a registered elector to delegate his voting rights to a representative that he nominates So this particular option is usually available for armed forces or police and government officials posted outside India Let's say for example I am the high commissioner or ambassador for India working in United States of America or let's say I am the soldier who is guarding the embassy in United States of America america i may not be able to physically make my presence in india so what do i do i nominate another person it can be my brother it can be my sister it can be my father it can be my mother it can be my friend so anyone whom i feel confident about i can say who this person is so this particular person whom i'm nominating should be a person from that particular constituency which means let's say for example i have my vote in bangalore north for the lok sabha elections so i will be nominating a person who is from that particular constituency so it is he whom i am nominated so any adult who is not disqualified from casting a vote from that particular constituency he goes and votes for me as my proxy so kindly remember this person whom i authorize is also called as the classified service voter kindly remember for proxy voting there is a physical presence of the person whom i have nominated so he goes there and votes such person will not be given an option of postal voting so in postal ballot what happens there is a paper there is a number of candidates there is parties where i give a tick mark on this paper 
where I send it via a post but in proxy there is physical presence of that particular person and also remember wife can also be enrolled as part of the service OTA what do we mean by it let's say for example I am the ambassador for India in United States of America and I'm married as well so I have my wife who can also be a service OTA which means my wife can also appoint a nominee and she can also appoint a proxy OTA where that person can vote for my wife at the same time my son or my daughter will not be able to use this as a service order. This is explicitly only for my wife. In case I have domestic servants who are accompanying me, then such people will not also come under the service order. It is explicitly reserved only for my wife, not for my son, not for my daughter or even for my domestic help in United States of America. So what is the present context now? On the recommendation of the election commission, the Ministry of Law and Justice has amended the conduction of election rules of 1961 where they have also allowed the senior citizens who are above the age of 80 as well as those that have disabilities to become a part of postal ballot. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article about ease of doing business has been explained on 25th of October 2019 under the 4th, 5th as well as 6th topic. So kindly look into it and entire analysis for the same has been explained. Now let's look into the next article. This article here are speaking about the green crackers. A firecracker is basically nothing but an explosive device. It can create a loud noise, colors, releases a lot of chemicals and also produces gases which can contaminate the atmosphere. For its manufacture, there are large number of chemicals that are used. It includes sulfur nitrates, magnesium, nitrogen dioxide, so on and so forth. Added to this, there are other coloring agents as well. This includes strontium as well as lithium. And strontium salts include something like the nitrates, carbonates and sulfate of strontium which create the magic of the red color. Then there are other colors like the orange color which are produced by the use of barium as well as calcium salts. These chemicals that are used in these crackers have proved to be hazardous. Why? Because they are choking the respiratory systems. They are also causing serious ailments like cancer, shortness of breath and many other respiratory diseases. These cracker bursting not only is causing air pollution but it is also giving rise to water pollution, noise pollution, fire accidents as well as garbage problems. This is when the Supreme Court had to step in and also call for its regulation. And what this is all about has been explained on 6th of October 2019 under the second topic Green Crackers on Diwali Pollution at 5 minutes 21 seconds. So kindly look into it. This article here is speaking about the organites. What is the context? At the Society for the Neutral Sciences where the 49th annual meeting happened, two US scientists from Chicago came up and they spoke about the advantages of the organites and also the ethical issues with respect respect to the organites. So in this particular discussion, we will understand all the significant aspects of organites and the ethical dimensions as projected by these two scientists in the United States of America. Before we understand what this organites is, we will have to understand what a stem cell is. There are cells which are performing certain activities in our body. They are very elementary structures which perform certain functions. In cells, there are two types. One is differentiated cells. The other one is the undifferentiated cells. What are these differentiated cells? These differentiated cells basically mean they have a clear structure. They have a clear shape and they have the ability to perform certain functions within the body and this is very specific in nature. Which means there is a cell, it has a shape, it has a function, so it is performing only that particular function as prescribed by its body activities. Let's take the example of red blood cells. They carry oxygen around the bodies in the blood. So this is a particular function. So it is only doing this function. So what is a differentiated cell? It has a shape, it has a structure and it is performing certain activities in the body. 
then there are other type of cells which are called as undifferentiated cells so when it comes to the differentiated cells they are performing such activities and they are very specific in nature but when it comes to undifferentiated cells they are usually obtained from the multicellular organisms and they are capable of dividing enormously into different types of cells which perform different functions so on one side you have the differentiated cells which is performing certain specific task when it comes to undifferentiated cells these are cells which are performing multiple functions so there are cells which are performing only single task but these are cells which can perform multiple functions so these cells which are able to perform different functions is what is called as a stem cell so a stem cell is one which can perform different function from the same cell structure these stem cells originate from two main sources what are those one it includes the embryos the other one is the adult body cell so what is this embryonic stem cells from the earlier stages of pregnancy we know that there is a sperm it can actually fertilize the egg and this together can become an embryo around 3 to 5 days after the sperm fertilizes an egg the embryo takes the form of a blastocyst so what is this blastocyst this is nothing but a ball of cells so this blastocyst contains the stem cells and the embryonic stem cells come from the blastocyst that is 4 to 5 days old so when scientists take these stem cells from the embryos that are usually extra that is a resultant of the in vitro fertilization so these embryonic stem cells are nothing but pluripotent what does pluri stands for it stands for several and potent stands for ability so when you have a particular cell which is able to function effectively performing different tasks such cell is what is called as pluripotent cell meaning they can turn into more than one type of cell apart from this source for the stem cells there are other body tissues as well let's say for example the brain or the bone marrow or the skin it is these areas where again stem cells can be extracted from the adult cell bodies why are we discussing all this that is because the organoid which is a group of cells that are grown in laboratories which is three dimensional in nature which are the miniature structures that mimic or function like that of an organ is extracted from a stem cell so what is the organoid basically an organoid is nothing but it is the one which is grown in the laboratories what do they do there are certain organs let's say for example the liver or the kidney or for example the skin they have certain certain functions these organites reflect or work or mimic that particular function of the organ so it is not entirely functioning like that particular organ but certain functionalities which are miniature in number that often resemble the early stages of developing tissue can be reflected in an organite how are organites grown in the laboratory so stem cells are provided with nutrients so you extract a stem cell from the embryo or from the adult body cell and then you put it in the laboratory so you grow it provided all the nutrients that are required and other specific molecules to grow and ensure that that cells are resembling a specific organ so what it means is the growing cells are capable of self organizing themselves and they are able to replicate the function of this particular organ and they are able to regenerate and also function some of the primitive functions of that particular organ organites of the brain small intestine kidney heart pancreas prostate and inner ear have been developed previously according to all those that have been grown in the laboratory now the question is why are scientists happy or what is the significance of these organoids let's say for example with lot of money invested in the research and development they are increasing the complexity and the diversity of the organoids so these organoids are able to mimic the functionalities of the organs so by doing this they are able to test the new drugs what happens in the present scenario when there is a new drug that has to be tested for its efficacy and for its proficiency what we do is we conduct clinical trials on the human beings or we put it across on the animals with the improvement in the organoid structure we would be able to do it on the organoid rather than on the animals or the human beings so the first significant factor is the safety and efficacy of new drugs can be tested on these organoids 
Apart from this, let's say for example, there is a particular mutation or change in the gene structure. It is this change or the mutation in the gene structure that is causing a particular disease. Let's say for example, cancer. So what these people would be able to do is they'll be able to take the tumors out of it. They'll be able to understand it. They'll be able to visualize it. And in the future, they would be also able to come up with healthy organoids to identify and verify the gene mutations so that cancer and other diseases can also be controlled. This is the significant aspect. However, there are some ethical issues that may arise. What are those ethical issues? Let's say for example, there are embryonic cells. There is a scientist who has taken permission. He has taken the consent from the parents and there is embryo and there is stem cells that is extracted. They would have given consent assuming that this is used for something positive in nature. However, what if the scientist starts using for something negative, something disastrous, something which is against the society? This is an ethical issue. Why? The consent has been given because it is going to be something positive for the society. But if the same scientist is using it for the negative outcome of the society, who is going to question him? What are the global laws that are present is a grey area. Added to this, there is the concern of the sensory abilities of the organites themselves. So as we initially discussed, it mimics the organ, but this is very minute in nature. It is not acting as a full functional organ. So when this is implemented into another human being, is it able to understand the sensory abilities of the fully grown organ in a human being is another ethical issues. And this may give rise to negative impact on the health of a person is what the article trying to speak about. It is this that we have to understand with reference to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article, why have the Naga peace talk stumbled and the first article will be discussed in the next one week. As of now, we are not going to discuss them. Let's look into some of the prelims practice question. The tuning test is associated with artificial intelligence. So what is this tuning test? This is nothing but a method of inquiry in artificial intelligence for determining whether or not a computer is capable of thinking like a human being. So the advanced level of artificial intelligence can be established with this tuning test where the computers will be tested whether they are able to get adapted as much as that of the cognitive ability of the human being. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. NRIs are allowed to vote through the postal ballots. People who are traveling within India are not eligible for using postal ballot system. Which of the above statements is correct? The answer to this is two only. Why? NRIs are not allowed to vote through the postal ballots and they'll physically have to come down to India and vote in their constituency. There is no concept of postal ballots for the NRIs. Now let's look into the next practice question. The Sagar initiative of the government of India is related to ensuring peace, stability and prosperity of India in the Indian Ocean region. So basically, this is nothing but a maritime initiative of the government of India, which provides key priority in the Indian Ocean region. Why have we picked this up? Because there is a reference that has been made with respect to the saga. However, with respect to this particular article, we will be discussing once we have a clear cut picture. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statement. It is a country located in Northern Caribbean, where the Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico and Atlantic Ocean meet. It is east of Yucatan Peninsula, south of both US state of Florida and Bahamas, west of Haiti and north of both Jamaica and Cayman Islands. The country it describes is Cuba. Let's look into the map for the same. So you have the Gulf of Mexico, you have the Caribbean Sea and then you have the Atlantic and this is where Cuba is located. Now let's look into the next practice question. In India, markets in agricultural products are regulated under the Essential Commodities Act of 1955 and this has been asked in the year 2015. Now let's look into the mains practice question. What are stem cells? Explain how these cells could revolutionize the approach of medicine in the future and may possibly have ethical issues attached to it. So please write all your answers on the comment section and in case you have liked our initiative, please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.